Hello everyone, and welcome back to another Kerbal Space Program video in which we will be covering the construction and sort of, you know, testing and tweaking of the Ultimatum SSTO. A 208 seat SSTO that flew to Ilu and back without the need for mining or refueling uh, in a mission I did a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I mentioned that I could possibly show off the construction of this craft if it was something people would be interested in. And generally the consensus was yes, people would be interested to see kind of my quote unquote process for constructing these sorts of crafts. So here we are. This is me showing off the process. Now, I did actually start this slightly differently to what I normally do. What I normally do is first of all draft up what I want the craft to do, which was no different in this case. I set the objective of having an SS tier with over 200 seats uh, and give it the ability to go to Elu and back. But after that, I didn't. I did things a little bit differently. So ordinarily, take for example my Odyssey SS tier, where the uh, theory was it had to go to the man and back with 40 seats. I started off by building all of the crew cabins it would need to meet that requirement and then I built the ship around that. For this one I thought it's going to need a lot of engines to get off the ground and usually what happens is when I need a lot of engines I'll end up just sort of building a general craft shape that I like and then having to keep on bolting more and more engines on to it ends up looking a bit naff I don't, and, and for me at least uh, appearance of SSTOs is quite a big factor. I really want them to look uh, cool and spaceshipy. So I thought let's start with the engines just because we're going to be needing basically just nuclear engines and rapiers to power this thing and nuclear engines and rapiers are like quite small in diameter uh, relative to the rest of the craft. There's no like big size rapiers or big size nuclear engines at least in stock KSP. So it's going to be the hardest thing to get it looking good like that's going to be the hardest part of the ship to design with aesthetics in mind. So that's why I kind of started off with the engines and then worked my way forwards. Uh, let's just start with, the, I kind of came up with this basic shape idea. I thought let's just have like essentially the entire wing structure or the back of the wing structure be engines. And then we could just, you know, add or remove um, tanks and fuel, um, tanks and engines, sorry, as and when was necessary. So this is a little bit different in that I started off with the engines and then built my way forward. So I got my calculator out, made sure I had enough uh, crew cabins. So use the uh, 16 seat ones whenever possible, then just sort of rounded up the numbers by having those side mounted cabins, much like the Artemis SSTO, which was the 200, uh, 224, <laughs> no, 124 seat late SSTO I did all the way back in 2017. So yeah, um, the reason I'm kind of doing this video, I did mention that uh, people did want to see it, but also I've never really talked too much about the time lapses themselves. I did make a video, granted, a couple of weeks ago of me building a spaceship, a spaceship, a space station in time lapse. I guess that's kind of a spaceship, space, spaceship, isn't it? But I've never really talked about the time lapses for crafts in general. I've never shown the, the time lapse for a craft of this sort of magnitude. Um, usually it's just things like rockets or just the cargo for rockets. But it'd be nice to kind of show off. Uh, a more complex build of something that ends up being quite an impressive feat. I feel like this might hold the world record for a number of seats in an SS Toyota Elu. I don't actually know. The, one of the big inspirations was because, um, well, my current understanding of the Elu SSTO uh, landscape was that uh, I made my Ar Archangel Mark II back in the day, uh, which was 60 seats to Elu and back, which uh, at the time was the most seats I'd ever seen in a single stage to Elu and back that didn't require mining. And then McBolsom ended up making a 136 seat SSTO to Elu, so really showed me up there. And then more recently than that, although they were both released at similar sorts of times, Nessus made one that was 192 kerbals to elu so both of these videos are great by the way i'm going to put links to both of them in the description and i highly re recommend you checking them out because they are they were good videos but we are coming towards the end of the ultimatum uh alpha mark one test ship you may notice some subtle differences between this and the final product namely the fact it is far more stumpy it doesn't have as much fuel so as a consequence of that it doesn't end up, didn't end up with as much delta v as we needed from low cabin orbit we can just first of all make sure it gets off the runway and into the air, which we're about to find out. Blazing success, loads of room, lots and lots of power. As you can see, the thrust weight ratio is very, very good. Certainly a lot better than the product we ended up with. And that's because we just have a much, much lower mass right now. We have a far less fuel, not enough fuel to get us going, but I didn't really bother calculating anything, which was another point I wanted to get across in this video, really. A lot of the questions I get asked on my Discord server, link to which uh, <coughs> is in the description, <laughs> is, uh, you know, how do I calculate the payload mass to rapier engines and all that? And yes, 
whilst it probably is advisable that that's the best way of calculating how many engines you need and all that, you know, calculate mass to rapier ratios and things, I tend to just slap boosters on, see what works, and if it doesn't work, go back to the drawing board by either adding more boosters, less boosters, more fuel, usually a combination of all of the above. <laughs> so this is like the first initial flight. I'm going to show like the flight in its entirety, granted played at much, much faster than real time speed. Subsequent flight tests after this, though, I'm just going to kind of show the beginnings and endings of the flight and any interesting things that happened uh, in the middle. But for the most part, this will be the only flight you actually see in full. Just going to give you an idea of like my basic ascent profile when testing this thing flying relatively with a relatively low angle of attack early on to get the rapiers up to about 400 meters per second in speed once they're going that fast uh, lots and lots of air is getting to the rapiers very very quickly so their thrust is at kind of uh, they, they, they have they provide greater thrust basically and when you get to that sort of speed then you can start pitching up to the upper atmosphere so we're going to keep an eye on that delta v readout in the top right hand corner of the screen to get to elu we need i was trying to aim for about 4500 meters per second as my goal so as you can see we are ending up with just over, like a tiny amount over 3000 which is nowhere near enough i drained so the the uh, surplus oxidizer we had left using hyper edit just to see if that would give us a little bit of extra delta v but it was a completely insignificant number so back to the drawing board here time to add more fuel is my objective when in doubt either add more fuel or add more boosters so first thing we do we realize i realized i had too much oxidizer so we can remove some of these oxidizer tanks and replace them with liquid fuel only tanks thereby providing more liquid fuel for kind of the same weight if that makes sense you may actually notice while we're here that the rapiers have those little nose cones sticking out of them in case any of you were wondering that actually decreases the aerodynamic drag of the rapiers it's a little bit cheaty, but I don't think it's too egregious. Uh, I don't think, I feel like this craft would probably work without those nose cones sticking out of the rapiers, but I really wanted to try and make as many optimizations as I could. So we're going to go ahead and fade to the second flight test. We have more liquid fuel, but the ship is still kind of similar in size as before. So we're going to go ahead and make sure it can get off the ground first and foremost. This is the big moment. So no, not quite as much clearance this time because we are carrying a bit more weight. As you can see, we can get ourselves into a good flight. Here we are getting to the 10 kilometer mark. Trying to, I usually try and aim for about 1600, 1500, 1600 meters per second of speed before we initiate the rocket phase of the rapier engines, which is currently occurring just because this is the most inefficient part of the entire flight. Uh, so we want to try and spend as little time as possible burning in closed cycle mode. I always wanted to make sure we had a little bit of oxidizer left over just to help us with our ELU landing. So there we are. Before it fades away, we ended up with 3,800 meters per second of delta V just there, which is better, but we weren't fully circularized there. We still had a long way to go, so we really didn't have enough fuel still. So then we came back to, let's try and shed some weight. So let's see if we can ditch some engines, try and get our you know, weight saved a little bit. This would obviously result in a lower thrust to the craft. So I was really hoping that we would still have enough thrust to get off the end of the runway. Here we can see the uh, the landing gear sliding us about a bit, but in general we did okay. Kicked ourselves off the ground and off we go into space. And there we are, just past the 4,000 meters per second mark, so already massively under budget. Our apoapsis is not even above the common line just yet. We've run out of oxidizer. We don't have enough thrust to weight ratio in the nuclear engine to circularize, or indeed raise our, apo raise our apoapsis to a satisfactory height in time. This version of the craft was not going to be good enough either. So we reverted, went back to the drawing board, decided to make some more changes. So the next thing I did, added more fuel, <laughs> more boosters, more fuel, more boosters, more fuel. That's the mantra for this craft's construction. So let's uh, you know, try and cut down a bit more weight. We can move more, some more engines, uh, but add more fuel. So now we have an even greater mass and even less thrust. And as you can see, uh, managed to just about get off the ground but we really are can't be cutting too much more weight or engines after this because we're really not gonna be able to get clear of that end of the runways here we are getting into orbit once again a little bit of rocking here and there we have 4300 meters per second so far we've used up all our oxidizer but as you can see our apoapsis is only 45,000 meters which is not very high and we're very close to our apoapsis and we can't we so we don't have enough time to circularize with the nuclear engines alone so Still not getting into orbit, and we're still not getting enough delta V. We still have less than 4,000 meters per second if we were to theoretically able to get ourselves circularized. So, new plan once again. 
let's restore some rapier engines, get our speed up, and then keep on adding fuel. So yeah, more boosters, more fuel. There we go. Added quite a substantial uh, increased amount of liquid fuel there. Added some solar panels just for kind of show. This thing uses RTGs as its main power source, given that out at ELU, uh, what am I saying? Solar panels aren't very powerful, aren't very useful out at ELU. So RTGs are your main, are your main stay power source uh, for ELU missions. I guess you could use fuel cells as well, but uh, RTGs usually are the better choice. At least for sandbox mode where cost is not of uh, concern. So we are getting to the end of the runway again. We've added quite a lot of fuel now, although we restored some of the boosters, we didn't get all of them back and we finally reached that point where we weren't going to get off the get off the runway. We I, I compromised too much on the thrust to weight ratio. So back to the drawing board once again. What do we do ladies and gentlemen? We add more boosters and we add more fuel. So there we go. Add some more fuel tanks, add some more boosters. Hopefully this will provide the thrust that we need to get ourselves off the ground. We, we, I, I've got way too many air intakes on this thing, there many there for the show. We did a bit of sliding on the runway, and once again, not quite enough thrust rate ratio to get ourselves in the air. So, what do we do? <laughs> we add more boosters, more fuel. Specifically, we replace a couple of the rapiers with jet engines, the whiplash engines. These have greater thrusts, particularly at the lower speeds than the rapiers do, and they weigh less as well. And then, of course, for the rest of the craft, we can apply the old mantra of more boosters and more fuel. Let us see if this was enough to get us airborne. So here we are. I was sitting here with bated breath as we see the SSTO rocketing its way. Or maybe rocketing is not the best word to use, given this is a space plane. But regardless, getting towards the end of the runway, here we go. Three, two, one. And it's all okay. We got off the ground. And as you can see, the stats for this craft are now very similar to the craft that eventually ended up successfully getting to Elu. We can see if we can get through the rest of the flight okay without a hitch. So we are coming to our rapid acceleration phase. As we get to 10 kilometers up, we really start flattening out, trying to get as much speed as we possibly can out of the air breathing and, you know, most efficient stage of the uh, jet engines and rapiers. Now we can skip ahead to the closed cycle ascent and then finally to the last bit of the ascent using just the nuclear engines. Our apoapsis is above the common line at 73-ish meters, a thousand meters, I should say, and we have 4,700 meters per second of fuel remaining. So I was like, yes, we're getting there. Our periapsis needs to come up a little bit higher, but 90 kilometer, uh, 90 kilometer apoapsis, 60 kilometer periapsis, that's pretty much a, a good, that was good. We got a good orbit there. We had enough delta V. I was happy that this would be the final iteration of the craft, and that's pretty much how I go about building SSTOs. It's all basically trial and error. Not the best way, granted. Uh, I said we probably wouldn't recommend it <laughs> as the best way by any means, but that's just how I build SSTOs. Trial and error, I don't do too much calculation or anything like that. I find, I don't really find it that fun doing all the maths and stuff behind SSTOs, so, you know, there you go. Um, bit of a filler episode, sorry. I am still moving house and building furniture and painting, so I didn't have much time to play KSP for a full video this week, but I hope this was good nonetheless. On screen there are links. The left-hand one is the mission that this thing eventually flew. Hope you enjoyed the video, and goodbye.